Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be making hot ice and ethanol from non-acetone nail polish remover. To start, you'll need some non-acetone nail polish remover. The non-acetone polish remover is made from ethyl acetate. Be sure that ethyl acetate is listed in the ingredients, preferably first. Open both bottles and begin adding them to a one liter round bottom flask. We will start by doing a simple distillation. The ethyl acetate will come over at about 77 to 100 degrees C. For the brand that I used, it was first to come over. However, other brands may put in some lower boiling ingredients, so discard anything that comes over below 77 and above 100 degrees C. This first distillation does not have to be perfect because as soon as the first is done, we're going to reset up and distill a second time. On the second distillation, collect comes over at 77 to about 88 degrees C. I found that the brand that I used used a fragrance that came over around 90 degrees. So be sure to pull off your receiving flask before any of that starts to come over. Also be careful not to get any of the concentrated fragrance on you. It's strong enough to make you gag, plus you'll also smell like nail polish remover for some time after you wash it off. I got just over 540 milliliters after my second distillation. Take what you got and place it on a magnetic stirrer and drop in a stir bar and begin stirring at a medium speed. Now add some anhydrous magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salt. You can make store-bought Epsom salt anhydrous by cooking it in an oven at 475 for around 45 minutes. Let this stir for about 20 to 30 minutes. After stirring, let the solution set for 15 minutes so that all the magnesium sulfate settles to the bottom of the beaker. Now, Carefully decant off about 250 milliliters, or 200 grams to be more specific, of the ethyl acetate into a small beaker. We'll be converting this into the hot ice and ethanol. The rest should be poured into a bottle and stored in a cool climate. Ethyl acetate is a very useful solvent and we may be using it in future videos. Now let's move on to making hot ice and ethanol. Weigh out 90 grams of sodium hydroxide. I'm just using crystal drain cleaner you can buy at any hardware store. You'll also need 200 grams of the ethyl acetate we just made and also 200 milliliters of water with the stir bar in it. Place the water on the stir plate and begin stirring at a medium pace. Now slowly start adding in the sodium hydroxide. As most of you know, this is an extremely exothermic reaction and the beaker will get very hot. Also, not to sound like a broken record, but be sure that you're wearing proper safety equipment for handling hydroxide. Once you're done, let it sit to cool for a few minutes. Then grab a one liter round bottom flask and pour in the hydroxide solution. Afterward, pour in the 200 grams of ethyl acetate. You may notice that two layers form. This is not a problem. Now we need to set up for a reflux and reflux the solution for two to three hours. All right, so what are we doing here? When ethyl acetate is placed in water, a very small amount hydrolyzes forming acetic acid and ethanol. If we add a strong base like sodium hydroxide to the solution, it will react with this small amount of acetic acid to form sodium acetate, also known as hot ice. Since the hydroxide is removing products from the reaction and sodium acetate is unreacted to ethanol, the equilibrium shifts to the right and more ethanol and acetic acid will form. As long as there's hydroxide to react with the acetic acid, the reaction will go to completion. However, since not much acetic acid forms at any one time, 
you'll need to add heat to help the process along. After your reflex is done, reset up for distillation and distill the ethanol off. Stop collecting once the temperature reaches 100 degrees C. Now you have your two products separated. Here is the sodium acetate in water and here is the ethanol. To purify the ethanol further, you will need to dissolve about 10 grams of sodium hydroxide in water and add it to the mixture. Reflux the solution for another hour to be sure any residual ethyl acetate is reacted. Distill the solution, collecting what comes over at 78 degrees. Then add several grams of calcium chloride or magnesium oxide and redistill to remove most of the water. What you are left with is a reasonably pure and dry ethanol that will work in most reactions or as a solvent. However, it is not drinkable ethanol as nail polish remover has other alcohols like isopropyl alcohol that contaminate the uh, ethanol. Gravity filter your sodium acetate and then start to boil it. Mine had some very small particulate matter that I could not filter out with a paper filter. So I'm going to show you another way to filter solutions that is very effective at removing material that paper filters miss. If your solution is not clear, take a small amount of carbon powder and add it to your solution. This is activated carbon I found at the aquarium section at Walmart that I ground down with a mortar and pestle. Since the solution is boiling, be very careful as putting in too much carbon at one time could cause it to boil over. You do not need a lot, just enough to, so that the solution turns black. The solution does not need to be boiling when you do this, but it must be agitated either by boiling or stirring. You can skip adding carbon if your solution is clear. Let this boil or stir for about 10 to 20 minutes. While we wait for the carbon to do its work, set up your vacuum filtration system with the paper filter as normal. Now add several grams of diatomaceous earth. Add enough that you get a layer about a centimeter thick. Be careful not to breathe any of this as it could cause you some serious health problems. Now carefully flood the funnel with water and turn on the vacuum. This will evenly distribute the diatomaceous earth on top of the filter paper. Fill the funnel with water two to three more times to wash the powder. Now carefully take the funnel off and then clean out the flask. After it is clean, re-add the funnel and you're ready to go. Now, very slowly, add your mixture to the diatomaceous earth without disrupting the layer. If you pour it in too fast, the powder will just mix with your solution and nothing will be filtered. You can do this procedure with gravity filtration, but it's a bit more tricky and it tends to take forever. As you can see, the solution is looking a lot cleaner. Gone is the cloudiness and very fine suspended particles. It has a very slight yellow color, which is probably because I didn't add enough carbon or let it agitate long enough. However, it's fine since this is for demonstration purposes only. Now we need to concentrate the sodium acetate by boiling away the water on a hot plate. Boil until you start to see very small crystals forming on the surface. Then remove from heat and pour the mixture into a clean beaker. Then place that beaker into a large thermos and add the lid. This will allow the solution to cool slowly and help to form larger crystals, giving a purer product. After a couple hours, remove the beaker from the thermos and pour the crystals into a vacuum filtration system. Wash the crystals with cold 91% isopropyl alcohol then set them aside to dry. If you wish to use them as hot ice, then just dissolve them in a minimal amount of boiling water, transfer to a clean, non-scratched beaker, and let cool very slowly. This reaction, while admittedly not the most interesting separation procedure, is great for the beginning chemist, wanting to get their feet wet in separating chemicals. First, it's cheap, as both bottles together cost under $6. Second, it's easy to obtain at any pharmacy. And last, it's reasonably safe to work with as long as you're not in an enclosed area and keep away from open flames. Also, the end product is pretty fun to play with. Thanks for watching.